So Trailmakers launched 1.0 last week, and uh, with it a brand new campaign called Stranded in Space. Although technically it should be called Stranded on Cluster of Islands. But anyway, uh, it's a really fun campaign and a very speed runnable campaign, and I thought I'd uh, jumpstart the whole speedrun thing by uploading, uh, at the time of this video, the first speedrun the first recorded speedrun of uh, Trailmaker's Stranded in Space campaign. So, um, I don't have it, there aren't, since this will be the first one, there aren't any rules pl uh, plotted out by anybody else, so I decided to start the campaign right after this loading screen and just before the cinematic. There's the timer right now. I decided to do this because loading time will differ from one computer or another and the moment you press the stranded in space button you are engaging in the campaign so I figured uh, all the cinematics within should be included in the timer so the timer starts here at the beginning of this cinematic and it'll end at the end of uh, at the very end when you get the congratulations screen so another thing that uh, another rule that I decided to put in use here is that I can't use any saved blueprints from previous runs of the campaign or whatever. Any car, vehicle that I use in the game, in this run, will either have to be an original design built within the run or one of the template vehicles that the game offers. So a minute in and uh, cinematic is over and the very first thing is I start with one of the template cars and I add a little bit of a hooks. These hooks uh, will make it a little bit easier to pick up the power cores and adjust the steering because that will help a lot uh, in the future when the vehicle grows in size. I decided to just use the template vehicle because it's a lot quicker than uh, building your own little go-kart and frankly you're not going to gain that much more speed by making a lighter more streamlined vehicle. Your cargo vessel has crashed and you have survived. This is another cinematic that you can't skip. Maybe in future patches will add like a escape planet. button to cut these cutscenes short, but in the end you're only going to gain your about a minute 30 by skipping these. And uh, in a game, Once you have in a speed run that's going to be 40, to an hour, 40 minutes to an hour long, it's not that big of a difference unless, unless you're like fighting for first and second place. But it's going to be a while before we get uh, a populated list of speedrunners of this game, I think. But I'll, I will always be the first, so I will have that to my name. I'll be rich and famous. Ha! Not really. Okay, so my strategy is to get a lot of power cores really early on. And... Uh, these first ones that I pick up, I start adding them right away because obviously two Bulldog engines uh, are a lot more powerful than a single one thanks to how the update modified the engines. It w two, two Bulldog engines in the beta were not that much better than a single one, but in the 1.0 it, it makes a noticeable difference. So this is my third core right here. I tried different ways to picking that up without dropping it and my favorite thing to do is to lasso it in with this hinged donut thing that I'm building. Uh, there's probably other ways to do it, but I figured this is a pretty simple and uh, quick way to, to do it. It's probably something quicker, but this is the quickest I could figure out to sif safely pull in the power core. So I just lasso it in, pull it. I tried a 180 here, but uh, I wasn't successful. I've done it before. This time it didn't work. Not much to say here. Just rush the power core to the drone. Add the power core as soon as uh, I can. Now my next, the next core I'm going to go for is up the hill, and there's uh, the long way around, which I used for a little while, and then I figured, why don't I just go up the same way I come down? And so that's what I'm doing here. I have enough power. It, it's easier to go up the hill if you go diagonally, diagonally instead of going 
straight vertical. For this one, all you need is an L shape that's two four by two blocks up uh, vertical and three horizontal, as you can see. Just a big schnoz, push it off. Got stuck there. R resets the position, uh, the key R uh, resets the position of your vehicle if you ever get stuck. This would be my, what, fifth power core? One, two, three. This power core Fourth, is right. Your Already switch. forgot. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention. If you looked at my transformation uh, squares, there's four on top, and you can choose what vehicle to transform. Another thing is I do is uh, I clear them before I start the run. So what I did, I don't know if there's a specific hotkey to clear them, but I just placed uh, a simple basic seat in all four slots and uh, that way I just nullify any usefulness they could have at the start. So now I'm getting ready to build my boat. As you can see I went and I pushed this uh, medium pontoon off the cliff and uh, you don't need to guide it. It's it's downhill so it'll start following, uh, falling by itself. Uh, if you're lucky it'll fall all the way to the to the drone. If you're not lucky it'll hit a tree and you're gonna go have to go retrieve it. It's about a 50-50 chance that it'll get stuck. One thing I found out about picking up this this uh, propeller here with the current design of the vehicle is that if I if I pick it up at an angle like I did there, you know, with the wedge towards the machine, it's easier to steer it than if you pick it up with its flat side against you. Uh, then it, it's just harder to steer it. You can see in the background the, the big rock is still rolling. Towards, uh, towards the drone. Large hinge, you don't need it for the ship, but you will need it for uh, future vehicles. And I screwed up there. I was supposed to let it go in. I pulled left a little early because I thought the drone had picked it up. I was getting ready to push the rock in here, but I lucked out. He decided to go in by itself, so that's technically a hole in one. Now, this is another mess up here. I drove on purpose in the water and I was hoping to drive far enough that when I get out of build mode I'd spawn in the water. Unfortunately, it, it uh, the build, whatever you call this screen, the build screen pushed me back so I'm going to start on land. As you can see, I'm using uh, another template vehicle, the, the second one, which is the submarine, not submarine, the amphibious car. Oh my god, my cat scared me. And I'm modifying it. I'm making it narrower so it'll travel faster. So you can see I'm taking out any useless block and just making the whole thing thinner. I also make it shorter because if you just make it thinner but not shorter, it wobbles a lot. Save that in my second slot. And uh, I'm making a second amphibious, well not amphibious, I'm just making a straight up boat. Which will drive faster on the water. See now, if I was in the water, I could have just darted off straight with the boat there, but uh, I had to drive myself in a little bit here for this run. It's not a big deal. I probably lost maybe five, six seconds in an, uh, in an hour long run. It doesn't matter. But you know, if you're going for first and second place and five or six seconds might just be enough to put you on top. That's something we won't have to worry for a while until this becomes more of more speed run. Is that even a word? Speed run game? Sure, let's make it a word. A verb. My next step is the electromagnet. You can see I'm going 80 kilometers with this modified boat. You have to make a little bit of a leap of faith here to get the electromagnet. Sometimes I miss. If you're lucky enough, you can just press the restore button and pop on top of the hill like I did there. A little bit of a miss there. This isn't a perfect run by any means. There's a lot of mistakes, um, but it's gonna be the first speed run, recorded speed run of the game, so there's bound to be mistakes. First time I completed this game, it took me like a combined nine hours, which translates to like six in-game days, and then I brought it down to four, then two and a half, two, and then 1.30, and then I decided I need to break the one hour mark and then I'll call it quits. 
Alright, so. It's the first time uh, that I use the electromagnets. And uh, there are two items I need on this island besides the electromagnet. One is the power core and the other one is the tail fin. The tail fin isn't required for the spaceship, but uh, I will need it for my other vehicles that I will use to pick up items, so it's handy to get it. Plus, I'm picking them up on a single on a single run. I don't have to come back and pick it up thanks to the uh, dual electromagnet vehicle that I built here. I had to remove two power cores, two engines, but it's only for a short period. Next step, diving bell. I only need it for... Sorry, I was listening to the audio there. Uh, yeah, so there's a power core over there that I'm ignoring for now. I'll get on the way back. So we're going to go get the diving bell. I really need this for only one place. Technically, I go in submerged places a couple times, like just barely. But there's only one place where I truly need to go underwater. If you, if you aim that just right, you can pull it out like that. Otherwise, you're going to need uh, to face your electromagnet downwards to pick it up. So it's, it's, a, it's just a matter of getting it from the right angle. This is where that second boat comes in handy with the wheels. All I got to do is remove the pontoons and then add the electromagnets. And voila. Now pick up the other one on the way back. And uh, you can see here I'm starting to nose down. That's why I'm uh, tapping the throttle because I, I don't want to go under and uh, I'm trying to keep the nose above water. In previous runs, I would uh, I would dart away on my uh, on my boat all the way to the next location, and then I realized why the hell am I doing that? I can just teleport back to where I need to go, and that's because we're gonna go get the mini thruster next. And instead of crossing this whole oh right before we get there, you can see I'm modifying a car here. I'll show you in a minute why. So right now I'm teleporting over here because we're gonna head back over there. We're going to the mini thruster island, which is across there. Uh, I don't need any electromagnets on this car, so I just need that car to drive as fast as possible to the next location. And six um, bulldog engines are better than two, especially uphill. Now, um, over here, there's a long way around. Well, first off, uh, I just want to say the first thing I'm going to do is get this drone. And that's for safety reasons. In case I crash, I don't have to start at the beach again. Now, there is a long way around, but I found a cool little glitch right here. As you can see, I can press R and go inside a mountain. And if you go to just the right spot, usually it takes me less tries than that. but. Uh, you can actually pop above the mountain and that saved me a good 30 40 seconds maybe even a minute uh, from the normal route now here is where i build my uh heavy lifter one of the three machines that i'm going to be using all the way to the end of the of the run there's probably faster cars that you can build in terms of not faster in terms of top speed, but faster in terms of assembly time. Uh, but this is the way I figured out my car, and I'm comfortable with it, and it's what I've been using to get to do my runs. So I've been sticking with it. I'm going to leave it to somebody else to figure out a faster car to build. Key, key to what I'm doing right now is to build a car that is simple to build, quick to build and sturdy enough to carry the biggest objects, the biggest uh, rocks in this game. And the mini thruster is big, but it's definitely not the biggest. Well, I think they're the same size, like volume wise, but weight wise, I'm pretty sure the raw jet is the heaviest, at least 
that's how it feels uh, the way I've been playing the game so you can see I put the uh, diving bell there which I will be needing later and there's a reason why I'm putting these motors up front although in retrospect I only needed to put two up front and I could have just put the other in the back but um, I was watching a video of my best time and I was like uh, like basically I was watching the video of my previous best time and I was checking where I was and I was kind of stressed out because we were you know right at the same position and I wasn't thinking clearly so I just placed all the engines there So <laughs> I could use a little more weight in the back, and that's probably why I, pro I should have put the rest of the Bulldog engines in the back. Uh, but, you know, a little bit of heave-hoeing, and uh, it worked. I can just launch off here. It's really hard to die with the diving bell. You have to, you know, like hit the diving bell directly on the ground. And with a car this size, it's pretty rare. You're more likely to kill yourself by smacking yourself against a rock by moving the hinge. The sidewalls of this car assist with keeping the the rock in place as you move it around. Okay, at this point you can see I transferred back to the beach. I'm gonna be heading for another power core, but this one is on uh, high ground that you can't reach by by just simple vehicle. And uh, this is the the rest of the build stage. I'm basically going to build the next two vehicles that I'm going to use until the end of the game. Well, one and a half technically. Right now I'm building the flyer, which I will keep until the end of the game. It's very basic in design, and this is where the tail fins come in handy. I'm using this seat instead of the tail, f the diving belt because even though the di diving belt is more dynamic, it has a larger surface area. And after testing, I, I found out I had better controllability with this seat. And remember, we're not dealing with aerodynamic parts here. We're just dealing with the bare minimum. So I have to make it as streamlined as I can with the raw materials that I have. I placed it like this so I don't have to deal with you know terrain. I can just launch off like a rocket. I'm adjusting the hinges there because they were not tuned to how I wanted them. So that's the flyer that will get me from A to B. Now I'm going to build uh, a drone, technically. And um, yeah, this is a pretty basic shape. It'll be upgraded a lot later. Right now I just need to make a basic one that will assist me to get uh, this next power core and also assist me in uh, landing from flights. You will see that in a, in a little bit. I could have flown to my next location from here, but I've had a lot of bad luck with it. And uh, turns out I just get there quicker with the vehicle. So uh, I wanted to take the safe route. I was, uh, I was a couple seconds ahead here and I didn't want to screw it up. Uh, compared to my previous run. So you see it says transformation unavailable here. That's a bug with the game because uh, I get that every now and then randomly with vehicles that have no problem spawning in any other place. Anyway, this is the vehicle I was trying to spawn as you can see my drone to get up here to get that one core. Very basic but uh, it gets the job done. You can fall from any height with this thing and not die. I love it. Again, this is not a perfect run. I could have maybe taken a slightly different route there and gained a few seconds, but who am I competing with? Okay, you can see I transferred to the northeast side here to get a little closer where I'm going and I'm finally using my flyer and the next stop is well technically the next stop used to be the gimbal but uh, I've changed my route a little bit and I'm stopping at this island to pick up a one more power core 
As you can see, I can use the drone there to safely land. It's harder to land with the plane. It's a lot easier to land with the drone. This power core here, I never see it. I always have to look at the map to make sure I'm going the right way. It's really well hidden, even though it's right there. <laughs> nice miss, jackass. Oh, if it wasn't obvious, I'm recording uh, this commentary after having played the game. I can't play and talk that well, let alone... I can't talk, let alone play and talk at the same time. Okay, I'm doing a slight modification here because this is where we're gonna need to go underwater in a minute. So I'm getting... Um, usually I get this ready when I'm already in the water, but I decided, what the hell, I'll just do it here so I don't have to deal with it when I'm in the water. I love this new transformation thing. I know it used to be in the game earlier, but by the time I got into the game, it was removed, and then it was reintroduced in 1.0. I, I love that feature. So we're aiming for that hole right there, and we're going to go get the gimbal. At this point, I realized I used the wrong vehicle. I forgot. I, I had to sit. I have the one with the underwater propeller saved in number, as number two and accidentally ax at, accessed number one. Uh, so that lost me a little bit of time, but not the not the end of the world. So you don't really need a sub. You just need a good car that can stick to the ground. The gimbal jet is pretty much the last uh, part that you need that's not required for the spaceship in order to efficiently move around the map. Here I drop it. I switch over to the faster ground car. The one that... <laughs> I didn't even see that chicken uh, when I actually played through the game. Nice. Nice moves. Learn to drive. Oh my god. You call this a speed run? Jeez. Well, nothing important to say here. Oh, wait, yes. So, see, one th an, uh, an advantage of having gotten that power core first... There's another power core in this area. Um, what am I doing? What are you doing? Yeah, there you go. Okay, I, I must have been distracted or something. So, when, uh, uh, there's another power core in this area, but it's harder to get without the drone. So, um... I decided to get the gimbal first, and the the advantage of getting the other, the first power core, the one I got here earlier, is that having activated the drone, I can just teleport here instead of flying here, so that saves me time. Now you can see I'm building, uh, I'm turning the drone, I'm modifying it heavily and using the gimbals, and this will be the third uh, vehicle that I'll use for the rest of the game, and uh, frankly the most useful one. I mean, technically, this car could probably do it all by itself with some minor modifications. Uh, of course, with all three, you get it done faster. But th this guy is really the articulate sky hook thingy that will help me in most cases to get this run uh, where to be under an hour. I put on one Bulldog engine so I can at least drive the wheels. Four gimbals to start with, two mini thrusters to move forward, and uh, one electromagnet. And uh, you can definitely build it without the tail fins, but I I notice the tail fins will help a lot in reducing your Tourette's uh, with this machine, because without them you crash a lot a lot more. So we're going to pick up one of the explosive power cores here. Perfect landing. Still, that thing is a uh, hell to drive when it's on the ground, so I like to switch to my heavy lifter, uh, even for short distances. I don't remember if I get this on the first try. 
Oh! Surprise, surprise. I guess I forgot. Even though I played this about 12 hours ago. I don't know if you heard it there, it just fizzled every time you touch the ground. These li these power these red power cores fizzle and it freaks me out because I've been exploded by them enough times. I forgot exactly how many power cores you need in total, like 22 or something. So that's going to be the majority of what I'm going to do. I, I'm basically trying to gather as many power cores uh, as soon as possible because they will also assist me in making my three vehicles more powerful. And then I'm going to get the rest of the of the junk. Now this little power core here s looks extremely easy to get, but when you have a vehicle the size of my car here, it's a pain in the butt. Uh, and so, in the past, I've tried to do it with my little hinged uh, electromagnet, and I always get stuck here. It's it's like a cursed power core. So I just said, screw it. I'm gonna throw this extra power core for a minute. This like extra electric electromagnet for a minute. Deal with it, and not save it in my uh, transformation hotkeys. Worked a lot better because in the past I would lose like 30, 40 seconds there. Stupidly, too. Now we go into the minefield. Should have switched to the lifter there, but I've only s would have saved like five seconds. It's all stuff where that's smooth. Well, that wasn't that smooth, I guess. See, all these little mistakes I'm doing, this is the point where other. The, those of you who are watching this and thinking, I can do the speedrun, these are sections where you can look at it and improve on and definitely beat me. Just using this, you can definitely beat me using the same strategies, but I'm sure more new concept and ideas will, will rise of uh, getting, you know, getting to stuff quicker. I mean, 1.0 is been out only for one week so there's definitely lots of room for improvement but you got to start somewhere right and I'm that somewhere oh that was lucky I will say that that was lucky I I should have exploded there I have 12 here so I decided to uh, boost up my my uplift on the drone which will help a lot. There's going to be a few upgrades to this thing. Um, I'm going to add more gimbals and more thrusters, make it a lot more versatile. As ugly as it is, this thing is dam so damn useful. I love it. I have 12 power cores, which is twice the amount that I have on this thing right now, so I double up on it so I can move faster. Nothing special about this power core. Just go down, pick it up. Well, actually, yeah, I rem I just remembered. Uh, if you if you just go straight up with the vehicle the way it is right now, you're gonna get stuck at the top of the hill with a vehicle this long with this kind of wheelbase. So that's why I'm adding those um, that third set of wheels. I'm also filling all the ca power cores I can with engines to get as much power as possible. Let's go! Come on, baby. There you go. Alright, so we're 20, 20, almost 29 minutes in. What percentage of the ship do we have? I wasn't even paying attention to that. Ah, oh, really not that much. Things will start speeding up here in terms of uh, ship percentage. I have to clear this tree. Should have landed underneath it, but 
I've already I've already crashed a few times here in previous speedruns and I didn't want to risk it. Now I hate this area because it's muddy and I'm resorting I mean yeah these are good off-road tires, but in the mud they suck. There's actually a dragon engine down there. Uh the one for the wheels, not for the air. And it sounds like a good idea to go and get it because you get more power and everything, but it's more power than you need, so it's it would be just a waste of time. Okay, you can see now I'm uh, not doubling, but tripling the amount of electromagnets. And that's because there are three spaceship parts that I want from this uh, cluster of islands. And uh, it's a lot more efficient to go once as opposed to going three times. Duh. I always forget which parts they are, so I, I use tab to make sure I'm getting the right ones. I mean, I technically know, I just, I'm very forgetful. What am I doing? Oh yeah, speedrun. Put those two big boobies, one to the left, one to the right, and now I'm going for the other one. Save the middle for the the last one, which you will see is the largest. It's the rolling power core that spawns up here. And this is a very muddy area, so I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna risk going in and clip it and come back out because I'm just gonna go under. I've done it enough times. So I lucked out actually there. I, I was just in the right place for it to spawn. I should have just backtracked here and go down the hill. Again, that would have gained me only a handful of seconds, but if I add all those few seconds that I've spoke of in the past, I could probably make up another minute or two on my time, but it doesn't matter. I, I achieved the goal that I was going for with this run, so um, I'll leave that for somebody else. I'll leave that extra space for somebody else to beat my speed run. 47%. Next island, Prize. I, I overshot here. But uh, truth is, I, I, I forgot where this power core was. I thought it was on a other island. Oh, oh, I totally forgot about this. That's another problem with overshooting is that it's such a muddy area, it's hard to drive this car in, in that muddy area. What am I doing? I totally forgot. Oh, oh, that's right. So you're not technically going underwater here. Uh, I mean, I guess you are. You're not going submerged, but those will help you go from one island to the next. In retrospect, though, I should have placed more. I mean, I have a lot of power cores available. I, I should have placed six of those as opposed to two. Yeah, definitely. Look how slow I'm going. Now, this could have gained me another good, I don't know, 10 seconds. Take notes, guys. If you want to beat me, just add six propellers here instead of two. And, and learn to drive, because uh, clearly I'm doing a terrible job at it. This is another power core. I instead of grabbing it, I just nudge it in. Doesn't matter. It's close enough. This power core is required for your spaceship. I only need two of the magnet slots on this island, but uh, I didn't want to waste time removing. There's no reason to remove the other one. I, I would just be wasting time. It's another one of those islands with a lot of parts that I'm not sure of. As you can see, I'm checking two or three times just to be super sure and. My OCD uh, playing its role there. Oh man, six. Remember, guys, six propellers here. Oh, I forgot about this guy. This guy pissed me off so much. I couldn't. I couldn't push the hinge down far enough to grab it. And and it's muddy. It's just like I at this top time I was ahead of my previous run when I was looking at on the other monitor. But I thought, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna lose it all here. Just 
Look at that timer go. Look at all that wasted time. Speed run, ladies and gentlemen. That was terrible. That was what, 30 seconds? At least we we'll leave the at least we we'll leave the muddy zone now. Go to the fun part. 58%. This is a super easy one here. The tail fins also kind of help glide this thing. Uh, whereas if you don't have them, you're just kind of going all over the place. Am I even recording? Okay, good. I gotta check my audacity. Oh my god, how did you miss? Idiot. Okay, at this point... Oh, I thought I was upgrading. I guess I do that later. Now we get to the hardest part in, in a minute. First things first, there's uh, one more power core here that I'd like to take. There, there's something funny about the road in this area. There's like little... I don't know what, but there's like little ledges on the on this area that... Oh wow. Alright, that's not the end of the world. There's little edges on uh, this on this side like there that you bump into and it can stop you in your tracks or break you. There's another one here also but sometimes I hit it sometimes I don't. This time I did. Okay now we get to the hardest. Uh, not the hardest part of this game but definitely the heaviest item to lift. And it took me a while to find a machine to, to edit the machine in a way that would uh, help me get the, the it's it's the raw jet before before I go any further it's the, it's definitely the heaviest rock in this game and it took me a while to edit the machine so I could properly uh, get it to the drone area right now I'm updating my uh, quadcopter here I'm uh, adding reverse thrusters so that I can kind of air brake and then you can see I have two side thrusters there to turn quickly left and right. So I'm going to use this to hop over to the raw jet real quick. Go, go, go. What are you waiting for? Go. Scoot. What? What a... God, learn to drive. Okay. Now we just nudge it off. Go. Now... Um, now this guy is heavy so the best solution I could come up with without spending too much time editing well I already lost some time there clicking the wrong stuff yeah yeah definitely click the wrong stuff you can see there's gaps where there shouldn't be uh, but anyway what I'm trying to yeah that <laughs> that sucked oh well uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take my machine and make it give it a, give it a much bigger butt, a nice big booty uh, with a lot of weight. So to help lift it onto its uh, not its bed, it's long story short. I'm trying to add weight so that I can lift it onto the car. And as much power as I can. We're not using dragon engines, just bulldogs, but. We have 19, well, 16 cores worth of bulldogs. I got stuck on one of the parts from the previous car I dropped by accident. So I learned something here. You'll see in a minute. There's such a thing as too much weight. And you can see how, yeah, that didn't work. So no problemo, just reduce some of the weight, waste some more time. See, now that I know this, I, 
you know, this is already, what, another 30 seconds that you guys could save there. It's a little less weight, a little bit more work, but after heave hoeing a little bit, there you go. What? What? I don't remember this at all. Wow. What are you doing? Are you drunk? Okay, well, you know with the broken machine, uh, it's working. I kept those middle, that third set of wheels on because of this edge here. I didn't want to risk getting stuck there either. A third set of wheels, excuse me, <coughs> a third set of wheels will uh, hinder your steering. Like, you won't steer, steer as sharp as you would with just four wheels, but, uh, you know, when you're carrying a heavy load like this up a cliff, you're better off with the extra grip than the extra steering. Bam. So the heaviest well, the heaviest one's done. This is a crucial part of your spaceship. Now there's another heavy one here that you'll need. I forgot what it is. Uh it's like another fin of some sort. I, I'm using the big booty machine, which I placed as my simple tail fan. That's what it is. I kept the big booty machine as uh, this my second transformation. I kept the regular one as the first transformation. And then on third, I still have my quad. And then the fourth, I have my uh, my flyer. This went really smooth. It's a very efficient uh, transfer of the simple tail fin. Are you bored of my voice yet? I'm bored. 40 minutes in and I'm still able to talk. Wow. Not bad for a simpleton. So thankfully there's still... I, I decided to do this now instead of saving it for last because uh, there's still some daylight. And I tried doing it for last when it was nighttime, or one of the last parts, and it was nighttime, and it just makes it harder. Uh, you know, you could probably raise the brightness of your screen or something, but I just got it done earlier because I can afford to. I have enough power cores, and all you need is a well-oiled machine. Another dirty red power core. Well, go. Pick it up. What are you doing? Oh my god. Go, go, turn right, turn right, go. Thank you. So far, no explosions. I'm quite surprised. Wait, why am I surprised? I, I, I played this already. Well, I, I got pretty lucky. And every other run I've done so far before this, even one that was just over an hour, I had uh, exploded a few times, so I'm pretty happy with this run so far. Other than the derpiness that I experienced on the on the mud with with that one piece earlier, where I kept flipping around. Uh, so now I just added uh, a third set of gimbals, uh, so the my drone is almost complete, and I'm adding a third row of thrusters to my flyer. More thrusters means more speed. Of course, if, you know, it helps if you know how to angle your vehicles. So now I'm aiming for the volcano. And this part here made me a little nervous because my last run, even though, you know, it was my best time, I, I haven't had much luck with the volcano. I would either explode when I hit the power core or hit the ledge and die. And actually my last run I died twice here. Once when I hit the power core and exploded and then again when I flew there and hit the ledge of the volcano and died. So I was uh, pretty nervous about doing this carefully and right and only once. So I'm taking my time here. Make sure everything is aligned perfectly. You can also grab the Part and it's at a certain angle where it glitches the physics of the game and starts spinning you uncontrollably. I have had that happen before in Ruin Runs, so that's why I'm trying to align it as perfectly as possible. 
Now there's two smoke stacks there, and uh, I'm aiming for this one over here because it's the closest. That that's really it. Some nice elevator music would have been nice. Oh, that's right. I'm, I'm going to be adding music after this commentary. Go. Dragon Jet. 74%. 45 minutes and 74% of the ship completed. Uh, so... Yeah, there's going to be... At this point, I only need four power cores left. So this is the fourth to last power core. Look at those incompetent skills. Yeah, I've exploded... Oh, I guess I didn't have it right under... I've exploded enough times with these red cores that... Uh, I'd rather play it safe than having to do it again. I'd like to figure out a way to combine the flyer and the drone so that I can move really fast in the sky but also hover and pick things up quickly and fly them down really quickly. But um, I'll leave that to somebody else to figure out. Oh, that was perfect. So this is the third to last power core. So now I'm going to transfer to the B. Oh, no, never mind. So that's I transferred to where I originally got the mini thruster. And now I'm going to go to the pipe forest, as I like to call it. It's where you find all the pipe parts. And uh, you're going to need three pipe pieces there for the for the ship. It's starting to get dark. See if I if I went and got the raw jet now I could, but it would just be a bit more of a pain. Uh, depending also like I was playing it I, I played this during the daytime so there was a lot of glare on the screen too. I would not be able to see around this time. See this this kind of this is where that uh, increase in the steering that I did at the beginning of the game pays off when you can make corners just a little bit faster. All right, at this point I can start heading towards the skies. Uh, I should have only two power cores left needed, and then you know cockpit, uh, another tail fin, and then a one by two block. So I went to the beach just because it's quicker to. You know, you just go straight up, um, and you're in the Avatar Mountains. Now, the raw jet may be the heaviest part in the game, but it's certainly not the most dangerous. What I'm about to do here is, in my opinion, for at least the way I do my run, the most dangerous part. As you can see, I'm tripling the electromagnets on my, my drone. That's one red core. That blinky light down, th uh, that blinky, those blinky lights on that mountain over there are all logic parts. You don't need them. For the for the speed run, but you know if you guys want to build something special and uh, oh that was a nice grab that's the uh, tail fin thingy. If you want to build something special and stranded in space, that's where you get all the logic components. That one island. So 
So now I'm heading for that one little blinky light over there. That's another red core. And that's why this is, in my opinion, most dangerous part of the game. I'm going to be carrying two red cores at the same time. And, and you know, and the weight of the weight of a of a third rock. So And this is already a pretty unstable craft, so when you add all that together, it kind of becomes like an Apollo 13 moment. Where you're like, everything, every move has to be extraordinarily careful. I'm throttling, uh, I'm throttling down, or forward? Well, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm throttling my forward thrusters here to try to speed up my, my fall. And I could have waited a little uh, before I started pulling up there, but I was kind of panicking. I really did not want to explode now of all times. I've had a few runs where I died going up the mountains and bringing down these uh, red cores so you know I, I was pretty ahead of my best time so played it cautious again it's a race against myself since there's nobody uh, nobody else to compete with just yet of course there's one screw up Yeah, when, when this thing's upside down, it's a little hard to control, so, and especially when uh, you're towards the end like that, I started panicking. So now there's two pieces left, one of which is the cockpit up here. Even though it's as large as the raw jet and the mini thruster, uh, it's definitely not as heavy. I lost my bearings there real, uh, a little bit. I thought I was on the wrong, on the wrong mountain. And if you forget to pick up a power core anywhere else on the mainland, they're they're on the right side. There's there's another red core there. You can always pick up here. There's also another one or two underwater, but you know that's that's a lot of extra time uh, wasted going underwater so this thing has the power to lift that and um, I don't know maybe there's a way of just dropping the rock and picking it up down there but I wanted to guide it in uh, to the right place so like I said this thing has the power it just needed the width and there you go I forgot one more thing I only need one electromagnet the other two if, if they grab on that they're gonna change the center of gravity of the machine and you're not going to be able to fly it properly. So I lucked out here. Usually I have to do this two or three times before I get the the rock exactly where I want it. And here it's a little off center but not so much that I can't control the craft. Other times it'll be completely off and I would spin uncontrollably or it will do that bug thing which will just increase revolutions until I'll tell you, you just have to reset because there's no way of controlling it. Once again, I'm thrusting down. I think I should be. I don't recall. I guess I have to also thrust to the left because of this thing being slightly off center. I was hoping to get it straight in. Didn't work. So I just nudged it in. And now I teleport over here so I can go for the final this piece. You would think that the cockpit would be the last part you get to complete the mission since it's, you know, it's high up there and it's huge and it's... I feel like that's what they meant it to be. You, you, they meant for, the, for one of the biggest parts to be up high and you get it for last. But instead, uh, ironically, the last part is this tiny little insignificant one by, one by two block. At this point, I knew I was ahead of my other best time, but I didn't know by how much. And I figured I was under the hour. 
I didn't know by how much. I thought maybe 58 minutes. I, I was at 58, but... Now I go to the launch pad. And like I said, the timer will end when the congratulations screen pops up. So this, in my opinion, has to be included in the in the gameplay timer. So you have it. 54 minutes and 27 seconds. I got all the parts needed in one day and negative eight hours, which is 24 minus eight, so that's 16 hours. But according to the game, it's 15 hours. So I was actually a little under 16. 15 hours to complete the game. And uh, I'm gonna show you the crafts that I've used. So this is my lifter. Very basic and quick to build. If you can improve on it, I welcome you to do so. And it's also my underwater vehicle. This is my heavier lifter, uh, the one with the big booty, to get the raw jet mainly. It's really just for that. This is the quadcopter, or quad drone, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, I'm just going to modify it to just show what it looked like originally. This thing was the most versatile. This thing was the MVP in my opinion. If I really wanted to, I could modify this to get the heaviest part. I could easily modify this to get the raw jet, but I would have to get it probably as the last part when I have more cores. Nevertheless, that was yeah my MVP. And then this is my my flyer, which helps me get from A to B very quickly. Very basic, but very efficient. And uh, there you go. That's the first speed run of Trailmakers uh, Stranded in Space. Thank you for watching, or whatever. Go home.